Walk on to God of Luck. This is Will Sanchez. Thank you for tuning in. This is a very special program of God of Run. My very special guest is Sam the Man Lafada. I just heard him described as Ruth Gersey's personal photographer. It turns out both Sam and I have known Ruth for years and years and years. I know her from the Galloway running team, and Sam knows her from the Front Runners team. I'm delighted to have Sam as my guest. Welcome, Sam. Thank you. Sam, you're currently known as the photographer that is there at the beginning because you got the champions like Fiona Bailey, you got her captured to the back of the Packers like yes. Ruth Gursky and the like, you're there. So let's start with how did you begin this love of photography? It really began many years ago. Uh, before I bought, I call it my big boy camera that I have here. I always took photos, always vacations, runs. I always took photos going back 40, 45, 50 years. I have bends of old fashioned photos, not digital, old fashioned photos that I have taken over the years. Um, I have lived, you know, I'm from Detroit originally, but I've lived in LA. Uh, I lived in, in uh, back to Detroit, but then I lived uh, eight years in DC where I really started to run because I lived in an area called Capitol Hill, which is directly behind the Capitol. And, um, and when I used to go to work, I used to walk to work and then see all the runners in front of the Capitol, which is the mall. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I'm going to start doing that. So that's where I started the run. Uh, How old was this about? I would say probably in my 30s okay. already. I mean, a little I, later than usual. Yeah, I, would, I'm never an, I was never an athlete. Never, never an high athlete. school. Not in high punk. school or anything. Was never an athlete. I just saw people out there jogging when I was uh, going to work and coming home. Um, and I started saying, I could do, I'm going to try. And I did. And then I moved to New York where I joined the Front Runners Running Club. Um, and then uh, I had an opportunity to uh, go to, uh, for a job in Boston. Um, I, I was a, uh, they call it general merchandise manager, and I took a position with Marshall's TJ Maxx. And I was with them for the like- Retailer, yeah. Yeah, the retail. Store. And I had the women's division, and at that point, I have not run a race. And two colleagues of mine, women, said, Sam, there's a seven mile race coming up in Boston. At that time, I was jogging, but not doing races. And they said, why don't you train for that? We'll support you on that. They live near me. I trained with seven miles. I did the race. I was so nervous. I was shaking. And the race started, and I was running. And uh, if people are familiar with Boston, uh, the Capitol is a huge hill going up by the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And also the bar called Cheers, which people is down at the foot of the hill. Yeah. And this was the, my first race. I looked back and I said, oh, I'm not going to be last. All of a sudden, when I finished, I quote myself as saying I became a rotaholic. I could not stop finding road races. Wow. And Boston, and the area of Boston was a really heavy duty running community. Right. And during the spring, summer, there was races during the week. I joke with people, I had a dog, and I put the dog in my car, went to work. And what I did is I, I walked my dog, then put him in the car, went to the race, changed in the car, put my shorts on, my, my sneakers on, 
went to the race, tried to find a young kid, said, I will give you $10. Would you do me a favor? Hold on to my dog. So I did the race, uh, but I could not stop finding road races I wanted to do. And in those days, there was, I never, I have to honestly say, I never looked at the results. I just ran the race for fun. At those days, there was no digital going on. So we're going back almost 50 years. Yeah. And I just just did it for fun. Yeah. And, I, and of course, when I was in Boston, uh, I should also emphasize, I, I traveled as a retailer a great deal around the country, around the world. I traveled Europe, the Far East, and early on, we had agents. And I just told the agents, please find me if there's a road race in the city, let me know, register me, I'll pay you when I get in there. So I have ran 378 marathons. Around the, the world. world. Globe. And be honest, until I moved to New York officially back, I never looked at the time. I never, I, I do know I never broke four hours. Let's put it that way. Well, obviously, if you Boston qualified, you would know because they would tell you. So you never right. PQ'd. Right. And, um, and when I lived in Boston, be, I never qualified, but because of uh, relationships with the uh, Boston uh, Athletic Association, three times I was able to get a bib. And three times I finished the race. Excellent. You know, so uh, the marathon. Um, the Boston Marathon. The Boston the, Marathon. The, the so. marathon all runners right. aspire to three right. times. Right. But over 300, it's, <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I, like I said, I just could not get, a, I just enjoyed running. Okay. Right. This is all types of races. Right. That's, and that's just marathons. The 5Ks, 10Ks, 10Ks half marathons. and the half marathons. And I of mean, course, the Fifth Avenue Mile, you probably did that a few I times. I did that a number of times, right. So when you finally moved to New York, you finally discovered not only front runners, but the whole community of New York road runners, a race every weekend. Oh, it was wonderful. In those days, you also were able to register. Uh, when I became a senior, it wasn't as expensive as it is today. But I just ran almost every race that I could get into, um, and including the, the New York City Marathon. Yep, yep. You know, um, I think uh, I, I ran that eight times. Eight times. Eight, eight times. Usually at the marathon, you have to, um, by lottery, or you get the night plus one. <laughs> right, and, and early on, they, you, you registered. That's right, that's right. And then, in fact, my first two New York marathons. I was living in Boston and I got in because of people being injured or had to rescheduled and, and couldn't run. And all of a sudden I get a, a, a notice literally weeks before that I've been accepted into the New York, New York City. Marathon. So now like 500,000 apply and only right. 55,000 exactly. get in. And this is all over the world now, not only in New York, but London, Berlin. So did you ever get involved with everybody nowadays want to do, was it the big six? They want to do Berlin, Chicago, Tokyo, Well, Boston. I did them. You did those. But when I worked in Washington, I worked for Woodward and Lothrop. They call the Witties. It was one of the finest stores in the country. And again, I had the women's area. And I traveled for the fashion to Paris, Berlin, London, and I had buyers. So, you know, and like I said, when early on we had agents. So I, re I asked the agents, get me in the races. It was a little different time and it was easier yeah. to get registered in yeah. the races. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Today, as long as I can be tired, not on that, not for your own doing, we talk for running because you're, you've been fighting illnesses. About six, seven years ago, I, I also fell in love with cross country. And when I started doing cross country in Van Cortland, it was a passion. I just enjoyed doing cross country races. And unfortunately, it also was put the end to my running because I was doing 
probably five years ago, doing a 15K cross country. Uh, I was in, on the third loop. And as I'm in the back, um, there was no one around um, up there. And I hit something with my foot and went down very hard. And I ended up having multiple back surgeries, knee surgeries. Uh, the irony is I finished the race. I had to finish because there was oh no one back there. And I finished the race. At that time, I had no, I probably was in a little shock and I, I now laugh about it. But when I finished a race and those, and you know, I asked them, how did I do? He said, you were first in your age group. I was thrilled. <laughs> I was thrilled. I mean, but then I got home, wasn't thrilled. I mean, I ended up in the ER about six years in the Six, six years ago. Yeah. And that ended. That, that, really that was ended. in your late 70s. Yeah. yeah. That ended my running career. I mean, okay. now, now, Sam, you recently posted that you're undergoing treatment for prostate cancer. <laughs> so, you know, you, you see the commercials all the time on TV. Pearl Mother Cancer Center right. advertises a lot. In fact, I think right. you're a patient there. Yeah, I am. And they and they are always promoting the Cyber Knife, which I think is the one you're going to be undergoing. Right. So tell us. How did they find it? Well, they found it because my PSA, let's say about five months ago, I saw my um, a urologist on a, my normal yearly visit. And, and of course, they took the PSA. The PSA test. The blood test. Which is a blood test and urine test. And, um, and then all of a sudden, I received a call from my doctor and said, Sam, your PSA is high. I'd like you to redo it. Redid it. The results came in higher, 7.4. And uh, normal is th below three. And at that point, the doctor said, let's do an MRI. Let's see what's going on. So I did my MRI. Uh, the results came in and advanced prostate cancer. Jeez. And so then, um, but prior to that, I had a skin cancer treatment removed from my forehead. The side effects threw me back in the hospital because my face blew up like a watermelon, black and blue, et cetera, et cetera. Then we, then I had set up a biopsy um, to confirm the, the cancer. So I had a biopsy. For the prostate. The, for the prostate. Yeah. And the side effects also send me back in the hospital. Oh, gosh. Because I had blood clogs, and I, I, they had to rush me into the hospital. So, um, so now, uh, now I'm going through the the. the start the treatment and uh, on I started with a couple of months ago when medication first they did uh, our hormone shots um, which is good for three months what they're trying to do right now is stabilize the cancer shrink it the cancer mm -hmm. uh, and on Tuesday of this week I'm seeing that particular doctor his name is Dr. Weiss and they're going to do more blood work and I will see him. What we're going to discuss, I have no idea at this point. Because the hormone shots is good for three months, and it's not been three months. Okay. Will I need an additional? I don't know. Okay. I will find out on Tuesday. But in the meantime, my other doctor, which is a Dr. Haas, I, I, those appointments are set up starting with C-scans, Blood, de uh, a, a bone destiny test, MRI starting at eight fourteen, August fourteenth. Uh, my eighty fourth birthday on the eighteenth of August, uh, and I will start w with doing all these tests, and then on on, I will say eight twenty four. They're going to mark my body, 
and for the radiation treatment. Then on 914, I start my radiation treatment. Five days a week, no weekends, 35 sessions planned. That's the last seven weeks. Right. How my body will respond, I don't know. I do have all the information, all the potential side effects. Um, I don't know at this point. So, so what is CyberKnife? Is, is that involved in here at some point? Well, I'm not going to have any kind of surgery. Oh, you know, I'm not. I'm not having. Treatment. I'm not going to have any kind of surgery at this point. At this point, anyway, this is depending on how exactly. things go. Exactly, that mean, could change. Obviously, you know that you know because it is stage four. Cancer. Well, you you are in a world class uh, cancer center, perma of a cancer center, right. which is part yeah. of NYU's. Right. How will my body respond? It didn't respond well with a couple of side effects I told you between cancer remover of my forehead yeah. and also the biopsy. Yeah. I had yeah. bad South. side effects that sent me both times back into the hospital. Jeez, so so, so uh, sorry to hear that. Ah, sounds like you're in relatively good spirit considering all, all these things. I'm not sitting home. Let's put it that way. I am enjoying going out. I will continue to photograph the races. Is there a team of people to help you? There's a team that I'm in touch with on both sides of the cancer. Okay. I, that's probably one of the best parts. I mean, I have three people other than the doctors I could call and instantly get answers for. Okay. Instantly. Meaning is they're, they're, I got their personal cell phone numbers, and if I have a question... I could get an answer or they will get the answer for me yeah, almost yeah. immediately, yeah. you know? So, and of course I, uh, and so there is a team that I, everything is programmed. I mean, when they call me, they had the dates. All I had to do is give them the times. All the dates are set for the treatments. If there's a, something else comes up, then you, you deal with it. We'll deal with it. Probably not only well known in the running community, well known at the, the perm of a cancer center. Well, I am. <laughs> the two main doctors, the Dr. Wise, which I will see on Tuesday, and then down the road is the Dr. Haas. I'm also a patient at the perm of a cancer center yeah, okay. for a different disease. I have something called smoldering myeloma. What is that? So, smoldering myeloma is a cancer of the bone marrow. Uh, it's a uh, it's a cousin to leukemia, but it's not leukemia. It's very okay. different. They're both considered blood cancers, but myeloma is a rare cancer. Well, I have hairy cell leukemia. It's never been treated. They just monitor that for me for 20, it might, must be 25 years now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's a long, long time. Yeah. What they call that watchful waiting, yeah. which is the phase I'm in. You know, they, it's a, a smoldering, you know, like a, like a volcano. Mm -hmm. So, so multiple myeloma is like, a, well, the, the smoldering version, the active version, the active volca volcano is called active multiple myeloma. Mm -hmm. That's when the volcano has erupted and you need treatment. Mm -hmm. The good news is that if you're smoldering, what they could monitor it like they didn't monitor your leukemia, although no, but like a, like, a, uh, like a volcano, you have certain eruptions and they go, okay, these blood markers are going off and they'll know within a few weeks that it's gonna blow. Mm -hmm. And then we have, they attack the, uh, the myeloma. Mm -hmm. Right now it's chemo, but they're trying to transition to immunotherapy. So I'm hoping to avoid chemotherapy because those side effects right, are tremendous. Right, right. And with multiple myeloma, it's not one drug, it's not two drugs, it's not three drugs, it's four or five. Mm -hmm. And some of the times, the extra drugs, it's just to overcome the side effects. Right. This drug is just for side effects. So I know what you're going through a little bit, and it's scary, but with the right team, it's manageable. It's, it's manageable, and you know, I, I've also, you know, I've also had three heart attacks in between all this. You were mentioned the medication. I'm on many medications. I mean, I mean, it, I, I'm bruised. I'm bruised very easy uh, because of the blood thinners, you know. But you also have quality of life. You're enjoying 
a good meal, you enjoyed laughter, you're going yeah. to the theater, you enjoy going to the right. races and, right. and taking those photos, yeah. you know, and then Papa invite you, come on, Sam, let's go, let's go for that breakfast after, after the run. Right. And I'm not letting uh, what's happening to me uh, medically stop me right now. I'm just enjoying my life and um, as much as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, we will we'll see down the road uh, how I respond to the treatment. But let's go back to your photography. So obviously at some point you turned to digital because, you know, the, the old Polo, Polaroid came out, the, the, you got the film right there. Right. But now you're digital. What kind of camera do you use? It's a Canon. I was gifted a, a, a great little camera and, and I was on doing, using that for the road races, but it didn't, it wasn't the right for the road races. It's just the, the photos were not that great. So I asked people like John and Ben Meyerson uh, of what they suggest. So they gave me a bunch of suggestions. And then I, I literally went to, uh, is that B&H? Yep. And I asked them what would they suggest. And it seemed like this was one of them. Um, and that's what I made my purchase. Excellent. Yeah. Now, I've had other photographers here, the famous Larry Stillen. Yeah. You know Larry, of course. Oh, Everybody knows I Larry. I love Larry. And I asked him for tips. I want to show up and, you know, in the cover of Roadrunners because of what. So what tips can you give or somebody that wants to have a good photo of themselves? You know, I, I don't know if I'm that professional because Larry is made a living of taking photography. Uh, and uh, I just find that um, <laughs> my camera has close-up settings they have landscape settings. I I find that I keep my I keep it on running settings. Aha! Uh -huh. And I find they take the best fo close up photos. You know they when you you know not just not just the road running that when you're on the road and you're trying to catch a runner is I find even when I do just you standing there and taking your photo. I keep it on the, on the running area. It's an all-purpose of, you know, one of, one of the people that always takes good photographs, Stephen Andrews, his photos always come out great because he has that big smile right. and he's obviously enjoying it, his run. Yeah. Mine is a, still a hobby that I enjoy. I've been very lucky because well, I, I'm with a very uh, large running club front runners that has many professions. Many are part of ABC Morning News, which I was able to get a couple of photos on. A couple are work for the Times. And in uh, a few months ago, I get a call from the Times. You, a photo of yours was submitted to us. We want to see if it's okay to use. Sure. And they used it. So I was talking to a friend. They said, you ever Google yourself? I said, no, I'm never Google. You should <laughs> Google yourself because it says all these things. I said, really? I, I Interesting. I still haven't Googled myself, by the way. It's a double-edged sword yeah. because Sam Lafada is a well-known name. So you, you, you see these other Sam Lafadas, yeah. and some of them are not all that great. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, But it's become a, just something that uh, I hopefully just get better at. Well, well, sometimes you get lucky, you know, for example, the New York Times photo. I, I bet if you look at that photo, you could see some, some common characteristics. First, I bet that the, the subject matter was not wearing sunglasses because Ben told me, Penn Coast told me, most, most companies or most publications want to see their eyes. They want to see their face. They want to see the teeth, the smile. There has to be especially a running photo, it has to show some kind of grit. Yeah. And Stephen Andrews shows it all the time. Evan Wood, when he's running, you know, he's always jumping and right. you know, he runs for Crohn's disease. Right. Every runner is always supporting some kind of disease. Which is good, you know. So we're going good. to have to have room to create the Sam Lafada 5K in support of 
the five big cancers that you've had. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I'm not going to do that, you know, because I, I, I have charities that I support uh, without doing, uh, doing that. I mean, you know, because my mother. Well, this is a charity to support your charity. Yeah. Oh, I know it, but I, I support, you know, my mother died of cancer, a sister died of cancer. I'm already very generous in that aspect uh, without putting up, a, 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 I raise money. One of the best races, by the way, I did the Damon Runyon Yankee Stadium race, which I did raise a lot of money. Yep, yep. I think they even honor me, I, I think close to $200,000. Wow. And, you and I had so much fun doing, uh, doing running a 5K. Uh, As part of the Yankee Stadium. Yeah, in Yankee Stadium. And I said, wow. I said, that was, it was a lot of fun. Finished first in my age group. Uh, but Again. I, 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 well, I was always thrilled because as I got I, older. You didn't have to fall down. You know, when I got older, I was very competitive in my age. Uh, and an age group. When I got in the 60s, 70s. Uh, I found that I was very competitive and that, and I, I enjoy being competitive uh, like that. Excellent. Uh, you know, Excellent. So. Well, this is Sam. We wish you many, 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 many more competitive Thank days. Thank you. Enjoyable days, smart days. Okay. Thank we you. We love seeing you out, out in the, uh, the race course. You're there early. Not only do you take pictures of runners, but now you're taking pictures of a sunrises and sunsets. So you're expanding. Well, I enjoy it. I, you know, I, I actually, I, I was invited. A friend of mine has a condo on 106th Street near Riverside. And he called me up because he, he, they have a place upstate. He said, Sam, use the apartment. You have a key. And he has a, a wraparound terrace. So I thought I'd go out there. Wow. With, take great photos of the fireworks. Unfortunately, it, 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 I, I'm on, it was the west side. Oh, this other east side. The this east side. side. And I'm 40, and the buildings just, I, I couldn't get good shots. The buildings were just a little too high uh, for me to, uh, to take any uh, good photos of the, the fireworks. That's what you've, you've taken other fine works. Yeah. Not everything is going to work. It's like having a run of so so, but still. You got the camera out, you took some pictures, right. you were happy, and you probably went to bed sleeping well. Yes. Sam, thanks again for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't That's expect this. I did not expect this. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I thought you were running. I thought you were gonna have a running group here. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you. No, my pleasure.